Right, hello lads and lasses and welcome back to Boys Down Underwear today. As you can tell by the title, the great Celtic Football Club have entrusted in me the decision to make on who should play at striker for the club against Motherwell on the weekend. But before we go any further though, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's free, it's easy, and it's the best way to help support the channel grow, and I am very, very appreciative if you do click those two buttons. But, without further ado, let's get into it. So, I've got three options here. Three options, three players, more specifically, that I think are our best three options at the moment who could fill this gap or void left by our three first-team strikers all being injured. Never have I ever seen a football club have all of their first-team strikers out with injuries. But, you know, there's a first for everything, and no. Before we go any further, I can assure you guys that Lee Griffiths is not one of these options. I will certainly not be recalling Lee Griffiths back to Celtic Football Club. But, you know, we'll go through each option. We'll have a, we'll have a little bit of a look at them and an analysis, give a verdict at the end, and I will make my boys down under tick of approval choice at the end. That's too long-winded, but we roll with it. So, nonetheless, our first option, and I wasn't going to include B-team players till I saw the news this morning that two of them actually got left out of the Tommy of Tommy McIntyre's B-team because they had been called up to the first-team squad. Now, the first lad is Joey Dawson. Now, Joey Dawson isn't someone who's came through the ranks at Celtic. He actually arrived in the off-season for a $300,000... Uh, 300,000 pound move from Scunthorpe United and joined the Celtic Academy. Now, because he's a B-team player, I, we have limited stats on him, you know. When, it, when you go into the Lowland League, like, stats and everything, they don't tell you for each game who were the goal scorers, who got the assist. It's not that professional. I'm not sure why they don't do it, but, you know, it's hard to find it regardless. But what we do have is YouTube, and YouTube is great because Celtic actually post on YouTube highlights of their B-team when they play. So... We get a sense of what these players are about and what we can expect from them in the future. And to sum up Dawson, he is your typical traditional typical traditional target striker man. Target man striker. I absolutely stuffed that up. Now, he towers over everyone, Dawson. He, I think I'm pretty sure he's taller than the goalkeeper, Oluwayemi. And look, he knows how to find the back of the net, as all good strikers should know how to do. And I, he's really good in the air. And even though he might not be the paciest player, he might not be the quickest player, he, he's not going to be the player, you know, to beat three men with cool dribbling either. But what he is going to do is he's going to use his physical presence to shrug off defenders coming at him, and he's going he's gonna to score a goal for you. He knows where to be at the right time, and that is the best quality a striker can have, being in the right spot at the right time to finish off golden chances. And at 18 years of age, like I said, this guy is scary big. He's really, re he's a really strong physical presence. And he's very similar to someone like Giacomarcus, who utilizes his physical game and his presence as a target man, rather than someone like Kyogo, who likes to create the chances through his movement. But as we all know, with the way Ange plays, players have to be just as good off the ball as they are on the ball. And Dawson is very good off the ball, not in his movement but in his pressing game you could see whenever you get they get the highlights out on youtube whenever there's a kickoff and celtic aren't kicking off dawson's always there he's pressing the first receiver and then he's pressing the second receiver obviously once it gets past that it's up to the other players but he makes that first intent and effort to try and unsettle the defense and he said it in a post-match interview i can't remember against who i think it was broom hill he said he's playing the way and wants the team to play his whole team to play pressing and playing attacking style of football and he's doing that and I think very promising young lad but he isn't the most exciting player but will he score you goals yes he bloody will also a big plus he is number eight for the Celtic B reserves and let's have a think who is number eight for the Celtic first team exactly now moving into the second option we have and we're staying on the theme of B team players and as you can't already tell here on the channel, we are, I am a big fan of the B-team squad and academy products because there's something about, you know, footballers who come through the ranks at your club that just make them so much more likable and you have, you have like an attachment to them, wanting them to do well and wanting them to succeed. Homegrown talents, I guess we could call them. And this lad is certainly one of them. It's Owen Moffat. And now Moffat has been key to the success of the B team this season. He's been one of, if not the best player for Tommy McIntyre this year. And even at the start of the season, 
he wasn't playing for the B team. He was playing for Celtic's team in uh, preseason and really, really liked him. He's got, I think, like two goals and an assist against out of three matches, I think it was in preseason. That's very good numbers for someone who had never played and has, hasn't even made his Celtic debut yet. And look, I think despite all this, he, he is actually the top goal scorer for Tommy Macca's beating, and he doesn't even play striker. That's Joey Dawson. He plays out on the wing, the left wing to be more specific, and he's bagged 11 goals in 19 matches for the B team, and five of those actually came in one match against Vail of Leith, Lytham, but, you know, he, he is a very, very good player, and he knows how to find the back of the net. And I'd say he's very similar to Kyogo in the way that he doesn't create chances by shrugging off players. He doesn't create chances by, you know, um, beating three players in the air. What he does is he he's so small and he's so quick that his runs go untracked at most times. And he's, he uses his pace. He gets through the defensive line. And, you know, it, he, he finishes them off very much like Kyogo, who relies on his movement to create chances. And Moffat is one of those players where if he was playing, you know, in front of Tommy Rogic, Tommy Rogic would love that because Tom loves playing you know, those through balls in behind the defence and Moffat would latch onto them nine times out of ten. He has the pace, he has the movement, and he has the uh, he has the drive to get to these balls. And look, personally, I think Moffat, one of those lads that will just bust a gut for this team, got a lot of promise, got a lot of potential about him, and I think at 19 years old, he certainly is more than ready for a go in the first team. I don't think his size will be an issue at all. We've seen with Kyogo, size does not matter. All that matters is your footballing ability, and Moffat has that in abundance. So, moving in, third and final option we have, and no, this isn't Rocco Vada or any other B-team player. I've actually got a first team option here. Surprise, surprise, and it's Mikey Johnston. Now, you may think this is a bit of a weird one, and you may think this is, or you may think this is the best option for Celtic because the Celtic fan base is very divided on Mikey Johnston. I think a lot of people criticize him too much. A lot of people give him too much praise, but I sit somewhere in the middle. I think Mikey has a lot of talent. I think he's a really good footballer. You can see he's got the potential to really hit good high limits, but the issue with him is that he's not consistent enough. And on the wing, when he has a final ball, it's really poor. He doesn't really have a strong final ball, which makes him you know, that level above other wingers. That He isn't on the level of Jota. Because Jota, he can finish off all his skills with something incredible. Jota doesn't have that, that, that skill in his arsenal as of yet. But how do we solve that problem? Put him in a position where the final pass doesn't matter. Put him in a position where all he has to do is score goals because that's what we see with Mikey. We see he always wants to go to goal. He always wants to get a shot. He wants to score. He hasn't scored since, I think, for over a year now. He is desperate to get on that score sheet. But look, I think if you move him to the center, this is just my opinion, but if you move him to the center where he finishes off the chances rather than creates them himself, I think he becomes a lot more effective as a striker than rather than a winger. And you know, I could have said Abada for this position, but I think Abada would just be really, really quiet at striker. I think Mikey would have a much bigger presence there at the striker role. Nothing against Abada, but I think he's much more suited to the wing. And look, Regardless if it is Mikey or a Barda at striker, it leaves the question who fills that void on the wing because they're both wingers and if we move them into the striker it leaves another gap and we don't have enough fit wingers at the club either right now to fill that void. So look, I think out of those two I would prefer to say Mikey at striker and to be honest I feel he would put a proper shift. I've given my reasoning on that. I think a lot of you would disagree with me on that. I, I do think, though, Mikey has that drive for goal and that eye for goal that would really benefit him as a striker rather than as a winger. So that is that, and we go into the verdict. Now, looking at the three options we have, I am a big believer in homegrown talents and giving the youth players their chance to succeed because at the end of the day, if you give a youth player his, first, his opportunity in the first team, he's going to take it by the throat because he knows if he, if he doesn't do well, he's not going to get another opportunity for a while. But if he does do well, he's going to get recalled and recalled. He's going to improve and he's going to get regular first team minutes. So honestly, in, in saying this, I think Dawson is, Joey Dawson is the best option to go at striker this weekend. I think with Mikey Johnston and James Forrest on either side of him, I think he'd relish the physical battle with um, Mugabe and I don't know who the other centre back is for, for for Motherwell, but he knows how to be he knows how to be in the right place at the right time. And I think with players like Rogic, like Turnbull, like Forrest, like Mikey, who 
is inconsistent, you know, but he can still get a good ball in here and there. If he can get on the end of this Joey Dawson, it's going to go in the back of the net. He's got a very strong finish on him. He's very, very... He's... He, Give him the opportunity, he's going to take it. Give him the service, he's going to score you goals. That's how to sum up Joey Dawson, and I think he will do exactly just that if given the opportunity on the weekend. But we have to remember, I'm not the manager, and, and this whole video was a lie. I'm actually not deciding um, who gets to play at striker for Celtic this weekend, if you hadn't caught on already. But what I think Ange will play, and I'm going with Mikey down the middle, and then Moffat on the left wing. I think Joey Dawson will have to wait. I think he'll come on later in the match, but I think... And would rather play a first-team player through in the middle and then give someone like Moffat his debut, who I think Ange prefers Moffat to Dawson. I think give Moffat his debut on the wing and try and get him to set up Mikey Johnson rather, rather than put the pressure on Moffat to be down the middle and to finish off all the chances for Celtic. But that is all from me. So leave in the comments below who you want to see at striker this weekend for Celtic and... Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, it all helps us grow amazingly. I appreciate you guys so much, and until next time, hail, hail.